Hi there, this is uh, Adam here in another episode of the Here to Listen podcast, um, part of our run of mini podcasts that we're doing with some of the organisations uh, that were booked on to take part in our community awareness days this summer. Uh, as you know, the NCS has changed into a more digital format now, so we thought it'd be a good idea to get all those organisations that were booked in with us to do a bit of a face to face mini podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, so that you're able to see all the good work that's going on in our communities. Uh, so I'm here with Maria. Hello, Maria. That's me. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, and uh, she works with Sustrans. I never know quite sure how to pronounce it. Sustr- I don't know. Is there an inflection? Sustrans? Sustrans? Uh, how do you see it? Well, we're a national organisation, so it depends which part of the country you come from. I say, <laughs> I say Sustrans. Yeah. Sustrans. Sustrans. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I personally had never heard of Sustrans, I think, before I started this job. So um, there might be quite a few young people out there that are unaware. So perhaps you can say a little bit about uh, the organisation as a whole. You mentioned it being national um, and then perhaps drill it down to the work that you do personally within the organisation. Yeah, so we um, we're promoting cycling and walking. And uh, what we say is we like to we want to make it easier for people to walk and cycle for more of their everyday journeys. So, uh, yeah, we're about um, encouraging people to use uh, sustainable transport, um, bike and cycle and walk um, to, to do all the all of those shorter journeys that are perfectly possible by walking and cycling. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Yeah, so you know, in the bigger world, we, we want to um, improve the environment, create better places for people to live and work. Um, so that that's just, just such a broad thing, really, from um, improving cityscapes, so so their places are, are nicer and healthier um, for people to live and work, um, to connecting towns and cities. So we work, we uh, our, our flagship project is the National Cycle Network, and that. Um, goes across the country and links towns and cities together and creates safe places for people to cycle and walk and scooter and you know enjoy themselves really really um come into its own with these last few months when we've been in this really difficult situation Mm. um, we've seen lots lots and lots of people cycling and walking and using the national cycle network um to, to be able to get their daily exercise so so yeah it's a it's a resource for the community mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm a, a big fan of that uh for he i mean when you talk about cycling and there, there seems so many benefits you, you mentioned a bit about environment and there's obviously going to be exercise and um some of the things that i'm hearing on other podcasts is about the importance of uh defending yourself against viruses in general not just covid but being able to to do that through exercise um and i i do quite a lot i mean i'm much more i'm looking out my window now like i'm kind of itching to get out because it's like it's beautiful out there and what better time you know um and and for me sometimes it's sometimes i have to have like a certain amount of reasons to do a thing right so the sun being one of them, vitamin D, good, good defence, you know, get a bit of a tan perhaps, there's a bit of that. Uh, the exercise side of things, certainly. Um, also, I get a bit behind on podcasts and I can go and do a thing for between an hour and two hours, headphones on and sort of catch up on my podcast as well. So like, I suppose incentivizing the cycling, I suppose, is quite a bit about, you know, what you do as well. I'm also aware of um, things that I discover. You said about the, the cycle network there. On one of my routes, I discovered, I live in Milton Keynes, that I can cycle from Milton Keynes to Bedford now. That's, I don't know if it's a new thing, but it's certainly something that I discovered. And I was like, hang on a minute, that, that's quite far. And it looks like it goes very rural, which would be a very pleasant kind of cycle ride, as opposed to some of the major roads that I would go. So would you be behind that? Would Sustrans be behind those ideas? Uh, yes, yeah, so 25 or more years ago, sorry, I'm terrible with dates, um, uh, at the millennium, uh, Sustrans got a, a grant, a large grant, and a lot of the National Cycle Network was, it came into being as a, as a, uh, on the back of that. Um, so the routes have been there for quite a while, but we've steadily been growing more, more routes, um, and we're at, uh, a position now where we're reviewing those routes and and trying to get them all to a, a, a standard that um, 
that anyone would be able to to utilize so so we're sort of we're, we're branding that paths for everyone because we want to to create places that anyone can cycle so it's important i think to say that we're not a sports organization we're very much about everyday journeys and u- utility cycling um so uh wh- when you touched on exercise one of the things we um we encourage is for people to use cycling to get from A to B. So you you will get in exercise in part of your daily routine. N- n- therefore, you don't need to go to the gym to do your, your workout. You, you're doing it as part of your daily activity. Um, so the but but those routes that are sort of create um, oh, I don't want to say challenge routes, but that create sort of destination um, routes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some of them have been have been chosen specifically and picked out and we have them on our website as as I think they are still listed as challenge routes so you can do like the Trans Pennine Trail which goes across the the Pennines from Southport to Hull Um, there's there is one that goes from Oxford to Cambridge so that's another little challenge route that there's loads there's 10 or 15 across the country that are really interesting sort of routes once you get into it and you get the bug and you want to keep going Mm. so that's sort of cycling for pleasure and leisure which we all like to well many of us like to do and cycling for um getting from a to b cycling for transport so yeah there's there's so many different ways of looking at at what sus trans do Mm. yeah i I wondered if you had anything to do with the Millennium Cycle Route in Milton Keynes. It's called that. You mentioned 25 years, well, 25 years ago that you're involved in a project. You said the word Millennium, and I kind of thought, I wonder. <laughs> I bet we were. Do you know what? I wasn't around that then in yeah. Milton Keynes. I don't know. Now I feel terrible. That's okay. I can, I can ask my attention. colleague and get back to you on that one. <laughs> All right. No worries. There's um. I mean, there's lots of incentives, like you were saying, about doing it. And when you you said about the challenge side of things, I think that's a great thing to do as well, because there's something about achieving a goal that feels good. Um, there's a, a there's a challenge, I suppose, I face myself sometimes when I go up a place called Brick Hill. It's got this horrendous hill. It's horrendous. Like I've got to go in such a low gear to get up this hill. And because I it, my cycling kind of trails off over the winter time on my lowest amount of fitness is at the beginning of the summer and it's like that oh god I've got to like build up to that because I know I can get up it but the first sort of bunch of times that I go up it are really difficult but the reward once I get up the top is a golf a golf club with like canopied trees and obviously most of the time if you go up you've got to come down and the coming down is really nice there's a very very nice incline you know wind in my hair canopied trees very nice very quiet can coast quite a bit after I get down there so I think like part of maybe what you do is about reframing it sometimes and and the incentives that you might offer about the routes and the suggestions and when you talked about the website routes being on is there like almost like a write-up of like you know this is a difficult one or this has a lovely reward at the top or you know do you go into any detail around that? Uh, there's loads of information on the website on uh yeah what the routes are mm-hmm. and where they go to and for for some of them anyway there's written up a little um sort of booklet that goes with it so you can plan uh y- your days mm-hmm. and accommodation and refreshment stops and things like that um uh and then there's our facebook page so we've got a a face we've got obviously a number of facebook pages but we've got one around the national cycle network um where people can chat and, and sort of share those stories mm-hmm. about when they've been cycling and w- what the route was like and what they saw you know mm-hmm. general um information so so that's a good place to go to find out more mm-hmm. um yeah th- there's just there's there's actually so much information on the website though under the mapping pages Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so that's where i'd start if i was looking for a challenge route or indeed any um cycle route Mm. we um we've recently started mapping on the os maps as well so that you can click on a link uh on the os maps to see the national cycle network which is quite useful um for somebody like me who loves a map 
with all the detail that's quite a useful thing for exploring and planning mm. as well so yeah being able to list things that, that discovered i suppose as well when you said about the community sharing you know yeah. uh, i've discovered this you know check this out this is really good and exactly. um, yeah you know, one of the things i found with the lockdown actually is this inclination to go somewhere where there aren't people um both personally preferred perhaps but also following the rules i guess you could say um and i've gone like beyond some farmland and it literally goes out into this dell you know it's just beautiful peaceful you know i can hear the m1 in the distance i think if i if i was picky that would be the only the only disadvantage but you know the things that you discover and sometimes on the routes that you go you open up your own frame of reference sometimes as well um, I've thought about it in like video game terms, like when you're playing a game, it's usually like there's this what they call fog of war. It's like you can't see beyond a certain area until you move and then you move a bit further and it opens up a bit more and you move a bit further and it opens a bit. You know, and I think each time I've gone a long, long route, like one of the routes I, I saw like a um, like an old building with like a green dome on the top. But I went a different route, but I kind of you know logged it so next time i went out that and i went beyond that you know so i like the sort of the web i think that you open mm -hmm. up when you go on these regular mm -hmm. cycle rides you know obviously i'm a big fan <laughs> well, one of the things i've really loved now you're sort of talking about present times is cycling locally doing loads of different routes as you say but then you get to a place and you look back at another place that you know really well but you're in a you're in a, uh, looking at it from a different angle Mm -hmm. and and seeing how places that that are so familiar look different from a different mm. viewpoint that's yeah, yeah. what i really enjoy sometimes the perspective of how far you've gone as well yeah sure 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 i like that with a bike it feels like you've traveled a long way because when you look back mm. um i was thinking about exploring your local area as well and one of the jobs i did when i started with sustrans was working with businesses so trying to encourage people to commute to work by cycle or, or by walking and using buses, um, but not not to drive basically. Mm. Um, and we used to do travel plans, personal travel plans. And um, some of my colleagues still do this in other areas. Um, but yeah, that's that's a really nice way to get to know your local area again. So you you, you map it all out. You have a conversation with somebody like we're doing and talk about how how you would normally travel to work and and whether and how you might like to to um, improve it. And then we we'll look at the routes on a on a map and plan it all out. So mm -hmm. that's just yeah another way of exploring your local area if, if if like you've always driven to work and never really thought about it and then you suddenly look at a map and go oh look i could go that way and it's actually i don't know a mile quicker maybe or you can go along that canal route and yeah. and it'd be beautiful and yeah it's just i think you can also save time sometimes because we've all you know sat in rush hour traffic you know and, and found hang on it takes me half an hour to get to work when if i cycle i could make it in 25 minutes you know that kind of thing and get a bit of exercise as well absolutely and feel better <laughs> yeah sure um with with how we're going forward with the ncs the young people that are going to be taking part in the program obviously a bit different to how we've delivered it in previous years but much more of a digital focus and what we're inviting young people to do on the program is to view the videos that we're doing if um there was a group of young people that were interested in working with Sustrans. How do you feel they can, you know, do stuff around their social action project? Or is there any volunteering opportunities? Is there any projects coming up that you might want to involve them in? Is there research stuff? What have you got going on for them? So originally, obviously, in the in the previous world we used to live in, mm. we were all about getting practical action and getting people outside. And I was I had in my head a, uh, a piece of network, a piece of uh, cycle network that needs a shovel and a spade just to clear back the edges. Da, 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 da. So obviously we can't do that at the moment. So I was trying to think of other ways that young people um, could get involved. And the, the big one that we're quite keen on at the moment is just recording wildlife. So if you've got a piece of uh, infrastructure, so cycling or walking path, Ideally, if it's part of the National Cycle Network, so in your area, in Bedford, that's Route 51. Cycle so Route 51 and 12 are the two routes that sort of cut through Bedford 
in Bedfordshire. Mm -hmm. um, so going out with your iPhone, hopefully you've got one, and recording wildlife. And uh, we have an iSpot um, account. Sustrans have an iSpot um, account where you can uh, just click on it and it re records the wildlife for you. So that's sort of if you're interested in that side of things. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing that is that we're all about and we would really want uh, young people to get involved in is just promoting cycling and walking generally. Mm. Um, so I don't know whether they would like to do a, a, a small film, a bit of, you know, a bit of filming, maybe something like this, maybe a chat with a friend about how they travel and how they either enjoy walking and cycling or what they would like to do. Maybe they could talk about a challenge that they'd like to do maybe for a day or a weekend in the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's a few things and we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter accounts. We have got, Sustrans have got an Insta account, but I'm not aware of that. So I'd have to let you know the details <laughs> um, in, you know, another day. Mm -hmm. Would another idea for a project be almost like a review, you know, that somebody goes on like a route and reviews it and kind of picks out like landmarks of interest, all that sort of stuff? That would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. A photo, yeah. photo review or, mm -hmm. or a filmed review. Yeah, would be great. Anything like that. Nice. Just using the the cycle network or, or using your bike, you know, anything to encourage people to be more active and to hopefully that then rolls into in wanting to cycle for the um, utilitarian, you know, aspects, going shopping and and uh, going to see friends. Mm -hmm. Would you have any advice if people didn't have a bike? Because I see these sort of Santander bikes. I've seen like community sort of funding type bike stuff. Is there any of that going on in, or available? In for Milton Keynes, yeah, Milton Keynes, they've got a big scheme, haven't they, with the yeah. higher bikes? Yeah, yeah. Don't know if there's anything in Bedford mm -hmm. at the moment, but there are higher bikes all over the place. Mm -hmm. Bike bike places all over the all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Bor borrow one. Um, uh, yeah, or get second hand bikes. I mean, the, the interestingly, so we've got a piece on our on the website about key workers trying to. Um, provide bikes for key workers and there's lots of that going on across the country and interestingly I don't know if you've if you've noticed but there is now a shortage of bicycles generally and uh, prices of second-hand bikes on eBay have gone up and you know there's a few things so I know the so, market has spoken <laughs> really it's hard to believe but really um, I've worked with a couple of people who do uh, who provide recycled bicycles so rely on donations of from people and various avenues for these bikes, and um, and it's a challenge to get second-hand bikes now. Yeah, but 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 it's just a it's just a bottleneck, isn't it? It, it will be it, it'll all even out in in time. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got a bike, you can scoot, you can skateboard, you can roller skate, you can walk. <laughs> um, I suppose you don't have to have a bike to use the cycleways. No, absolutely not. I know it's a bit of a I don't want to say it's a misnomer, but it's, you know, they're multi-user paths mm. with a, a lot of them. Well, some of them allow horses, um, but all of them are cycling and, and walking, um, which includes scooting and uh, anything else on wheels, really, as long as you're sensible. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of um, a, just a couple more project ideas. Um, what if because a lot of the NCS is about doing good in the community and I don't know if there's such a thing as um, almost like a like a package you know you go on a route and you leave a something nice for someone it could be I don't know a jar of honey or just something something like that it's the, the pay it forward kind of scheme um, I'm reminded of something called geocaching I know it's not the oh, same thing but yeah. you know that the geocaching system seems to be about like go to this um, uh, map reference or whatever and you'll find underneath this brick you know dig a hole a little bit and you'll find a little box with a such and such in it and here it is and I wondered if that, that could be something yeah definitely I mean get in on the geocaching they're everywhere now aren't they so <laughs> I, I don't do it but I've got a colleague who does it and yep. um and I know the that there are geocachers 
pretty much everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to speak to one actually. The only reason I know is I, I play modern board games and there's a card called geocaching. I'm like, I asked a friend of mine what it was. He's younger than I am. I don't know if it's a, a young person's game, but he seemed to know what it is. And I was like, oh wow, I've never really heard of that before. And apparently you find the thing and then you stick something else in there for, for somebody else to find. And that that sounds like a really kind of good yeah. movement to be doing good for it could be just a message of encouragement or yeah I don't know yeah so yeah. perhaps perhaps that yeah, might, the, the, yeah the other thing that I've seen a lot with families is the pebbles where they paint a pebble mm. and just leave it somewhere yeah and yeah it's just a nice thing to do isn't it and then you and then another child might find the pebble and yeah yeah. I think also a real excuse to leave the house as well, you know, just yeah. to, like, we're allowed to go exercising. I'm going to go on something that will have a sort of objective, let's say, you know, something to yeah. achieve during the time. Yeah. Um, if the young people are interested, then I, I, you've already sent me an email essentially saying that you are the person to yeah. contact if they're if, OK, if they want any advice or any pointers. Or um, I was also thinking that it, as a as a fund bid writer myself I think of some of the things in the funding applications that talk about proving something's happened that kind of aspect and I wonder about with young people using the roots getting back to you about that's why I thought of the review thing okay it, it actually acts as like evidence of use if you like you know so sure. it sounds like maybe that would be useful as well on top of everything else yeah Definitely. So my role is working with volunteers um, across the east of England and the Midlands. So uh, our volunteers do exactly that. They they ride the routes for us. They check the signage. Um, they uh, let us know if there's any issues on the road in terms of uh, health and safety or signs or litter or you know any number of things. So if uh, any young people want to do that, that's absolutely fine. It'd be great to uh, have have that information. We always say the volunteers are our eyes and ears on the ground because mm -hmm. um, as a lot of organisations, we we have not got as many staff as we'd like and certainly not as many as we had five or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So having a volunteer force out there is invaluable to us on, on a number of levels. Mm -hmm just to let us know what's what's happening on the ground okay yeah again that sounds like a great idea for the the groups out there so yeah it sounds yeah. like I'm, i've counted like five or six different projects potentially there so yeah if anyone's interested they'll they'll be in contact over the over the summer um i think uh i think that's about it from my side of things as well um i think we'll wrap up now um the uh, contact details and all the stuff I'll leave in the YouTube comments themselves so that people can make contact with you and check out the websites and Facebook and so on. Um, and yeah, I hope to meet you in person at some stage in the future. I mean, I'd like to think next year, you know, that the, the community awareness days as, as we initially plan them will be up and running with all the stalls and, you know, more more actual interaction. But yeah, I, I'd like to think next year, definitely, that would be something that we can do. And I'll see you at. Hope so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. I'll, thank uh, you. I'll see you in the future. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.